today is the date is the 6th of um, February 2021. Uh, it's my birthday the, tomorrow. Oh, is it? Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> uh, that's, that's very nice. Um, I just want to, let's start with your early childhood. Mm -hmm. Where were you born and mm -hmm. uh, your early life? Um, if you can just uh, give us a little uh, idea. Sure. Um, I was born in, in Kampala, Uganda. Um, and I was there until I was five. And because Uganda became uh, an independent country, British left, a lot of men like my father uh, got a little bit, um, not jittery, I would say, but got worried about their families. Because uh, under British, they were invited to actually build the empire. Mainly Indians did all the hard work. British didn't. The Africa... Uh, Southern Africa, East Africa were built by actually Indians in uh, either they were laborers or they were overseers. Uh, um, uh, uh, so people like my father went there as uh, he, he was a young man. Uh, he left our small town, Ras, to go to Ahmedabad to work in a, in a cotton factory. That, that, that was the normal thing, I think, normal thing that people did. Um, if you had four boys in a house, not everyone can actually plow a, a kind of a small yeah. land. So they said only one brother would stay behind and others would go either to Ahmedabad or to Mumbai or wherever, wherever the work was. So my father as a young man went to Ahmedabad, worked in, 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 in cotton mills, again for British if you think about it. And then the British then wanted to um, expand uh, their, their, their empire. So he invited Indians because they knew Indians very well. And they, they said, I think, that oh we could work with Indians but we can't, we don't know these, uh, uh, in their minds, uh, these black people, these uh, heathens or something. And, and actually people were, uh, 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 when they told me that that's how English used to treat uh, uh, Africans that way. Uh, so they said, well, we can work with Indians and Indians can, Indians can look after these Ugandans, Kenyans, South Africans or whatever. A pure racism. We were the brown wedge. Well, we were the, yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> so hence my father, my father and his two brothers. So three brothers went to, went to uh, Uganda. Uh, my father then uh, ran a provision store um, uh, and I was born in Kampala because I don't think Lugazi had a big hospital or not. So I was born in a Mango district hospital in, uh, in, in Kampala. Mm -hmm. I was five. Then my father decided uh, and a lot of other men like my father sent their families back to Gujarat. Now, in our, in, in our case, my father decided that we should go back to Ras, our ancestral uh, uh, town, uh, village, town, small town. A lot of other families stayed in Anand or other big cities like Vadodara. Um, but we, we, I grew up in my small uh, uh, town, uh, Ras Kam, uh, played a big part in, in, in a Quit India movement, uh, Sardar Vallabhai Patel was caught for the first time making uh, 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 an anti-British uh, speech, Quit India uh, uh, Movement oh, speech, under a banyan tree, a word, word Nujhad. It's still there and we still uh, look after it. Mahatma Gandhi was also caught under another banyan tree. Now he was caught second time by the British making a speech in our, uh, in our village, in our town. So the whole village, the whole town, had this kind of a, uh, 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 we are Indians kind of a ethos, a blood in them. Um, I was told that at one point, uh, uh, people from our uh, uh, town, from Ras village, decided not to pay any tax, Karviro Keche, I think it was called. Mm. So they said, we're not going to pay you anything, you bugger off. Uh, and, and the British said, look, we'll, we'll forgive you, we'll let you go, even if you pay up. I think there was a paisa which had a hole in it. Mm. I've forgotten. Uh, they said, no, bugger it. They left uh, uh, the whole village, went to the neighboring village called Jaroda, and they stayed there. I mean, th these are the stories that, 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 that I hear. One of my uncle, my father's younger brother, uh, he's the one stayed behind. Uh, now, he was, he, he was very uh, Kadi Dhari uh, 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 person. Kadi Dhari, he only wore hand-woven uh, uh, cotton uh, uh, material. Um, um, so through him, through a lot of men in our village, I grew up. Um, at the age of five, my father sent us to India. 
At the age of five, I grew up in, in my town, in, in, in Ras, went to school there, went to Balmandir there, did everything there until I was 17, where I did my matriculation. And prior to that, in 1971, my father came to uh, England. My father stayed in Africa. A lot of men stayed in Africa. They sent their families back to, back to Gujarat. That was the trend. And a lot of the times we never saw our, 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 uh, our fathers. Um, a, a lot of men, uh, girls and boys like me never saw them because it was so expensive to travel from uh, um, be it Kenya or Uganda to, to Gujarat. So I, I only saw my father three times. They must have had a, a father figure or grandparents or somebody. Well, my, my, uh, my dadima, she was around. So it, it, uh, she was a great influence uh, because um, next door, my aunt, she, they, they had the same story. That uncle sent my aunt and, uh, you know, their four daughters uh, back to Gujarat. In my family, myself and my four sisters and my mother, we were sort of living side by side, basically. So, yeah, it, uh, until I was 17, I stayed in Gujarat, I did my matriculation, and prior to that, even then, see, this is what the Gujaratis are, uh, are good at. They always think ahead. They always go, now, um, at the moment, things aren't going very well, something can happen, or whatever. So without doing anything, they would then prepare themselves and make, make the move. And I think my father made the move. With the help of, a, of, 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 of one uh, 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 Sardar friend, he said, actually, uh, what you're worried about? My father said, I have, I have four daughters and I have a son. He said, look, why don't you go to, go to uh, England? Because you have a British protected passport. We were still, we were not British citizens even then. Uh, the British took us there. Uh, uh, they used us, abused us, and only gave us the British protected passport. We didn't have all the rights. Until I think later on in the 70s, I think, I think, and it was also the Labour government, the Labour government was against us as well. I think people in this country, in Britain, fought for, for our rights to be British uh, uh, citizens. I mean, you know, I'm, 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 I might, someone might sort of say, no, you're wrong or whatever. But, but these are the things I remember. So my father came here first in 1971 from Uganda to here. Now, these are the sacrifices that a lot of Gujaratis have made. I mean, for how many years they, they stayed, uh, husband and a wife stayed apart. My mother did, did her duty uh, and, and, and my father did his duty. I mean, they, these are the kind of, uh, uh, um, these, these values come from your religion, your, um, as we say, Sanatan Dharma. You, you know, the, when, when people talk about Hinduism, Hinduism is, is, it's about how you live your life, basically. And there, there, these two people, they sacrificed uh, their lives, basically, for each other, for their children. Uh, like my aunt did next door, and and like my family, a lot of there were a lot of many families who did that, as well as other families who stayed in Uganda and when Idi I mean kicked everyone out overnight, uh, they, they, they they had to sort of leave everything and come here in a you know kind of a freezing cold British winter in nylon saris. Nylon was the fashion. I mean when I came here in Britain in 1972. I wore a nylon shirt. We came by Amsterdam and over here, I think our flight was KLM flight. It was the first time I flew. Uh, uh, I, 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 was, I was, you know, I was on, on an aeroplane at the age of 17 in 1972. And you said you studied in a Gujarat medium school. So right. coming to, yeah. so coming to England, uh, uh, tell us a bit about your experience, the first experience of coming to Britain. Uh, my first experience of coming to England. I remember when, uh, of course, in our small small town, everyone knew that with this family they were going to going to uh, uh, England, and in fact, around that time, I don't know, even before Idi Amin, people were going to Uganda rather than Britain. No one knew that uh, this dictator Idi Amin was going to kick all the Gujaratis out or he was going to demand that either you surrender your British nationality, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, become a Ugandan citizen. Not only that, marry, uh, give your daughters uh, 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 to Ugandan men. 
uh, that, 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 that was a sacrosanct. I mean, uh, people weren't even thinking about that. I, I don't think Gujaratis were racist, but of course I did hear that there were a lot of Gujaratis were misusing Ugandans as well. You know, they were treating them, but I think that they adopted actually from, from British as well. I mean, you can't blame everything on them as well, but they realized that, oh, that's how the British are treating Ugandans and we are there, uh, uh, superior to Ugandans. So some of them actually did, did actually mistreat them. I remember when I grew up uh, in, 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 in Lugazi, we had a, uh, I can't, when you say houseboy, it's a kind of a, in a drug term, uh, a term, but a kind of a home help. To, to you, when you come to Britain and say, my mother had a home help all her life in Uganda, they'd go, you must be a kind of, a, you must be owning an estate or something. But no, it, it, you know, uh, 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 it, it wasn't that expensive or whatever. I remember bonding with, uh, with uh, uh, him as well. Uh, 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 and I would go to a railway go down on a railway yard where all the sugar cane used to come to Lugazi because Lugazi had a big sugar cane factory, sugar factory, basically. And playing with him and he would joke with me, he would jump on a kind of a, a railway that, a, a wagon which was just uh, going from one side to the other. And I, I would think him, he's leaving me and I would cry and cry and cry. He was only playing with me. So, 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 so leaving all that and then coming to, uh, going to India and then coming to Britain, that was again a kind of, a, it wasn't an upheaval. I got, we got used to it. We got used to it. When everyone heard that, oh, these these are the kind of people who came from Uganda, Afrikawara, they used to go, call us Afrikawara, they're going uh, 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 to England. Um, everyone knew about it. In those days, they said, oh, in England, uh, there is snow uh, throughout the year. So I had, I had this vision of uh, uh, the England covered in snow, basically. And they and some of them were kind of a, were saying, uh, no, no, not in jealousy, but they would say, oh, give them um, um, give them two or three months and they'll come back. You know, that, that, they're not going to uh, uh, stay there in a, in a cold winter, uh, wintry England. So, yeah, when I turned up uh, in, a, in a nylon shirt because we left in September. So you can imagine it's, 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 a, it's a warm season in India. We had a KLM flight. We came to Amsterdam and Amsterdam to, to here. And at Heathrow Airport, it was absolutely freezing cold meeting my father and my, my cousin brother. Uh, we call them cousin, but we call them cousin brothers, brother. Uh, and then uh, he put us uh, um, uh, in a black cab. Uh, the minute we sat down, uh, my dad, my mom, uh, my three sisters, one of my sisters stayed behind because she was already married. And, uh, and then we were on, on M4 at Heathrow. We then came on to M4. And then the neon lights actually made our skin look different because our brown skin became kind of a little bit white. So my young sister, Rekha, said, look, we're all white now. We're all white now. And, and it, I, I, I still remember... Uh, because I, when I told my wife, my wife is English, and when I told her that that happened, they, they, they just, they, they just, um, yeah, they laughed, but they laughed in a way that how um, uh, different races actually regard the white skin in a, in a different light, you know, as if one night, uh, not, not that we didn't like what we were, but all of a sudden coming to Britain, we've become English now, you know. Uh, so yeah, uh, language barrier and uh, oh, uh, language barrier was 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 a big upheaval. I grew up in a in a in a small town, uh, in a Gujarati medium school. So although I learned uh, English, Sanskrit, uh, Hindi, uh, and Gujarati, uh, but when you learn English, it's not the same as uh, as uh, you're speaking English fluently. So from day one, uh, a day later, we had a one day of rest. That, that, that's how Gujarati mind works. You're going somewhere, you have a goal. It, it's not in a kind of a regimental way, but you, we have come here for a reason. Why you leave your ancestral place, your home, uh, you know, you're leaving your homeland, you're going somewhere else. You're going somewhere else for a reason. It's not that you hate your, uh, your India, your Bharat, your Gujarat. 
it's not that you're going going somewhere for a reason the, the, the my father only invited us he was only going to invite me to start with my father came here first he was going to invite me i would study while he would work uh, in factories uh, although my father had a a, 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 a a provision store but when we went to india he sold it and then he worked in a coffee factory in the jungle amongst uh, uh, ugandans um, uh, again the the whole coffee estate was owned by a gujarati so he would then put a gujarati manager overseer to do that he lived in a jungle on his own amongst all the kind of a, all the indigenous ugandans now there were gujaratis who were during the daytime would actually mistreat them come evening time now and, and these are the stories you hear uh, 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 in the evening at evenings at night those uh, ugandans who were who were mistreated during the daytime by gujaratis gujarati overseers or m- managers they would come and take revenge how they would they, they'd be drunk or whatever uh, they they would put uh, both their hands on a on a table and they would chop them off with a, with a, i think something that they used to chop sugarcane with i think they used to call it panga panga. Mm-hmm. panga they used to call it panga very sharp and 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 and, and so my, my father was a kind of a happy go lucky person so i think he blended in well i think according to uh, uh, me uh, he, he you know he was a good natured guy because he knew that he had to work with all these people basically mm-hmm. so he survived that way the gujaratis do when we came here we were called a uh, bloody uh, 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 if i can be uh, rude or you fucking pakis uh, and and indians would go gujaratis would go but hang on hang on hang on you you've got it all wrong but you can't reason in those days you had the you know powell speech um, uh, uh, he made a speech and that, that 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 infuriated people you had the rise of uh, skinheads as well um, and and they would see a brown skin and all of a sudden bash a paki uh, uh, um, and that you heard about it left right and center and so you hear about gujaratis being abused or whatever because uh, you hear about that very quickly because people are warning each other in a way be careful be careful so in the beginning it was difficult not speaking english so if you can't communicate uh, you're at a loss because the people would treat you as a, as an idiot or whatever so i had to a day later we arrived we had a day of freedom at home with my dad seeing the world outside this this britain uh, we lived uh, uh, on a road so it, it, it was on a hill you could see the whole of not the whole of england the north london uh, 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 of of uh, of of uh, london and you think where am i but i uh, you you look at you look at a place without any regret because you've come here you've come here on a journey my father only invited was only going to invite me but because he was renewing our passport someone said well invite all your daughters and your wife and let them come back two months later three months later and then let your son study and after my my studies i was going to go back to india because having four sisters uh, or, or one was already married having three sisters you know you need someone uh, uh, to 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 earn a good living to look after your family mm-hmm. um so 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 we ended up here because of me and uh, we stayed and this is 2021 we're all here and actually another sister who was in india she's also here too oh, good. Good. can you uh, can you give us an example of first hand racism you experienced yourself uh the, when you arrived aha uh-huh. when i arrived um I because I didn't speak English it, it was an uphill struggle a day later when I went to school uh, they uh, um, in, in an art school in an art uh, 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 I was doing uh, only those subjects which were good for me maths art um, and I think just those sort of subjects uh, in the beginning they 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 they, uh, they, they said you do everything I, I did CSEs But anyway my 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 first day in my art school my teacher said um, what's your name and i said my name is bhaskar bhai daya bhai patel mm-hmm. they all fell about they said what i said bhaskar bhai daya bhai patel that's how we're known uh, uh, back home you are the son of 
Dhyabhai Patel. Not my name is John Wilson. My name is John David Wilson. You know, you are the son of... So that people know who you are. They fell about. And, 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 and I, 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 I saw that as an insult, but I just thought there's something wrong here. Uh, it, I don't think they meant to uh, make me look little, but I felt very little because I, I felt I don't know English. How can I explain to them, Bhaskar Bhai, Brother Bhaskar, Dahya Bhai? It's a respect you give to yourself. You don't, you don't call yourself just, uh, 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 you, call, you have to call yourself John Bhai. You know straight away that Bhai means a brother. Dahya Bhai means that. And I, 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 I was at a loss. I, I couldn't explain that to them. So I shortened my name to Bhaskar Patel. So the whole, the whole, uh, 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 the culture of, uh, of celebrating my dad's dad's name just just uh, went went by the by the wayside. I had to shorten it. At the moment, I'm I'm working uh, uh, for ITV on uh, in, in in a show, and because of COVID, uh, we we have a car that takes us from my home in London to Leeds where we film, and um, uh, the driver is a Romanian guy. Uh, it's it's a kind of a, um, uh, an exclusive uh, a car. And um, I said to him, I said, hi, uh, he drives me. The first day when I met him, I said, uh, hi, my name is Bhaskar. He said, my name is John. Uh, but I said, it's not spelt as John. He said, no, uh, uh, for the company that I work for, uh, they, they prefer to call me John. His name is Jonuts. He comes from Romania, comes from a culture, uh, a, a cultural place. But even he, in 2021, is having to shorten his name called John. So let's uh, talk a bit about um, how you got into this acting uh, world. Um, somebody in your life must have encouraged you to go to acting school or how did that come about? You also talked about the art school you started. Yes, yes. That's something maybe connected. Yeah, right, right. Uh, the art school you mean in here. Yeah. Uh, right. That's maybe unusual, you know. Uh, yeah. Um, well, the, the, the art school I did in, in, in uh, Britain, I did it because there I didn't need English, if you think about it. But uh, the acting bug, actually, I don't think it started, but you always, uh, you have a kind of, a, someone sows the seeds, basically. And as you know, our culture is, is, uh, is so vibrant. You know, music and uh, 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 dance, it's always there in all our festivals. So every year in our school, we did uh, um, a yearly um, uh, event where we did plays on, on, on stage and, and the whole town would come and the adjoining uh, small villages would come and, 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 and watch that. Uh, and it was a yearly thing. And, and actually one of our teachers, he would write a Gujarati play rather than borrowing uh, from from uh, texts, he would write it, uh, like a social drama or whatever. Now, as I told you, my father was in Africa. I was in Gujarat with my mother and my, my four sisters. You know, boys, they need a role model. My sisters had my mother, but I was a kind of a, kind of a loner in, in, in my own way. So I always looked up to uh, boys older than me. So I would hang around with them. Um, uh, during, um, uh, I think we would call it not RSS movement, but uh, all over Gujarat, we had the China war and we had the war with Pakistan. Uh, they wanted to prepare the, 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 the men uh, to, to fight for the country if need be. So I would hang around with them. Um, and I've actually forgotten scout movement. Uh, the, the Indian scout movement was different. It was just preparing them, them, them as well. And I would always hang around with them. I would stay with them in a, in a kind of a marquee, in a tent, uh, away from um, um, uh, our homes and, and in, in a countryside. We would s sleep there. So I was always around older boys. When it came to drama and everything, I was always interested in uh, how they would rehearse or whatever, not knowing that I wanted to be in it or not. And they would say, oh, he comes and he watches it every day. Uh, after school, they would rehearse and I, rather than going home, I would sit, sit, sit around and watch and they would say, oh, he could be so-and-so's son. And uh, they would say, don't worry, you don't have to learn any lines. Just now and again, say something, we'll tell you what to do. But you come with uh, this uncle who's come to visit so-and-so in, in a scene. So I always sort of was part of that. Every year, it, every year it became a kind of a, uh, 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 not a chore for me. They would say, oh, we'll use Basker. He loves doing it. 
So I, I was always part of that as well. So that's that. I grew up watching our films. How? Not going to the nearby city in Borsat, but a lot of uh, a cinema, uh, the, the, the sort of cinemas used to come to us. So on the back of someone's wall, um, I don't know whether you've seen a film called uh, Cinema Paradiso. I can, I can see when I grew up in Britain, I thought that's my life in that film, Cinema Paradiso, where someone would come from a, from a, a neighboring city and they would, have, they would bring a big uh, uh, sort of projector uh, on, on, a, on, a, on a lorry. They would play it. Uh, and you have this, how can you hear it when there is a diesel, uh, there's a, uh, um, it, uh, what generator. do you call it, a generator playing. And then you have all these songs and dance and you're hearing everything. But you watch these old films, Saraswati Chandra, you have all these black and white movies. And, and I, I preferred watching those Hindi movies, those Gujarati movies, which were sort of social dramas, not like uh, you know, today's Bollywood movies. It just became from Hindi movies to Bollywood movies where they started copying everything. So, so my sort of uh, uh, seeds or my sort of uh, uh, liking for uh, acting started, I think, uh, uh, slowly from, from Gujarat, being in school plays, um, and then leaving uh, uh, Gujarat, coming to this country, and then I had to start my life all over again. We would go and see Hindi films on a Saturday and Sunday, which you know a lot of Gujaratis did that. Uh, before the VHS uh, came about, people would go and see films uh, every Friday, late night, Saturday late night, and Sunday all day, those double bills. So my family and we would go uh, to a cinema nearby, Curzon Cinema in Turnpike Lane, and would watch Hindi films. Even then, I sort of didn't know that I want to be an actor. I loved what was happening on that big screen. Even in Gujarat, uh, after I passed my matriculation, I would sneak away during the summer months. My mother would, 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 didn't know. I would jump on a bus and go to a, 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 a nearest city, Borsad. And we had two cinemas, uh, Nataraj Cinema and Vasant Cinema, and would watch whatever was there, watch a matinee. And then uh, as soon as the matinee finished, I would go back to the bus station, jump on a bus uh, and, and come home. My mother wouldn't know because uh, uh, during summertime, you know, they know that, you know, you're safe, you're playing with people, you, you know, you, 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 you've gone to fields to, to pick up mangoes or uh, uh, to pick up boars, so boar ne su but I know what you mean. Yeah, so, so to eat those, uh, and you were happy, you know, you weren't hungry, your mum knew where you were, you were with, with other kids, uh, you, you were chasing monkeys away uh, from the, from the uh, mango trees, so growing up there, you know, a baking hot season, but un under a tree, under a Limranu Jar, under a Neem Street, you knew you were safe there. Mm. Um, <laughs> coming here, watching uh, films, that was one thing. But then I thought, what do I want to do? And I thought, I actually want to fly. I want to be a pilot. Um, I liked it. I think I, I, I was always a free bird. I think I didn't um, education wise, I wasn't very good at uh, um, 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 sort of academic stuff. Although uh, I wanted to be, uh, I wanted to study aeronautics. I was accepted by Bath, Salford and City University. But I thought, well, actually, I'm still shy. I, my English is, is, is zilch. Uh, and if I want to be a pilot, I want someone else to understand me at the other end. So nearby in um, North London, um, in evening classes, uh, uh, they did drama, speech and movement. Uh, so I went to a, a, a theatre school uh, where they were teaching um, along with woodwork, metal work and, and everything. But this drama school, Mount Free Theatre School, they had evening classes in movement, speech and drama. And I thought, let me, let me, and here again, not knowing anything about the English literature. Uh, I just started attending, basically. Uh, I liked it. I started liking it. Um, cut a long story short. Then I thought, well, actually, do you know what? Um, I, I don't think I'm, I'm going to finish my... Uh, I'm going to go to a university to study uh, aeronautics. Uh, I thought, I'd, I'd like this acting business. But it, again, not knowing how, how I was going to make a living, living off it because there weren't that many parts. I mean, those were the days that there was only one show a week 
on a Sunday morning co called Nay Zindgi Nay Jeevan, which was only, uh, I think it, it was less than an hour long, black and white. We didn't have a television. in, in we, we didn't own a place. We were renting a place from a Gujarati landlord. And those were the days that in the 70s, no one would let you uh, uh, rent a, a, a place to a Gujaratis. Or even I think the Irish had the tough time and the Afro-Caribbeans had a tough time. Uh, what was it that uh, uh, we don't want uh, uh, blacks, dogs and whatever. The, 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 those were the kind of uh, people would openly say that. Irish. Yeah, Irish. Yeah. Um, uh, and so a, a Gujarati landlord, uh, again, um, 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 uh, we rented a place from him. Again, look at it. He promised uh, three rooms, one room with a kitchen, which, which had a double bed for my mom and dad. There was another room for three sisters and there was a small room for me. But when we landed, uh, he said, no, you can only have two rooms. So we had in one room, which was literally eight by ten, which had a, a kitchen all the storage, uh, the storage area, and then a double bed for my mom and dad. And in another room, uh, uh, we had uh, my three sisters and me, me sleeping on a, on a sofa, basically. Uh, because my mom, my father didn't want to challenge uh, the landlord because he was so thankful that actually he gave us, uh, he, he, he uh, let us have a, a place uh, in, in his house, basically. Um, so yeah, it, it, was, it was a kind of a, Tough. What I would have felt that uh, because you are a, were an Asian in this um, acting school um, must have been very difficult uh, to, to, to get a break. Did you find that? When I decided to go to a drama school, um, as I said, I did not see that many Indian parts, Asian parts, as they, as they say here, Asian parts. Um, um, but I, I, I didn't think about that. And I, I think that's a good thing about, because we are talking about Gujaratis and how Gujaratis actually go uh, outside Gujarat, outside India, and how they survive, how they thrive. Um, we actually go for it, I think, in my, in, uh, in, in, my, in my estimation. We go for it. And I thought, well, I want to do something. And I saw that as a challenge. Uh, I thought, no, I've got to do it. And so I, 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 I um, worked for a year in a betting shop uh, to, 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 save, to save the money. And there's, there's a story about that as well. And again, I think it could be that it comes from our culture. Uh, in a betting shop, um, they liked me because you know, I was a hard worker and, 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 and they were all older ladies who were worked behind the cashier and, and the manager and they were managers and they all liked me. So I would always get work. So I was saving up for a year. And again, my, I didn't tell my parents why, what, what, what I was doing, what I wanted to do. I always said to them, and I, I, don't, I don't think my, my parents actually objected, uh, or would have objected, but I said, I'm doing art. I didn't say that I'm, I want to be an actor. Again, I didn't have that kind of, uh, 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 I didn't have those dreams that I'm going to be a famous actor or whatever. No, I just loved something. I think that must be the, the, the free, uh, having that freedom to move, fly, and not, 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 not be in, a, in an office job or something. And I didn't even know what an office job would look like. But, but again, I think it could be that because I didn't speak English very well. And I thought an actor, I would, I would probably put on another garb and under that I can hide, I think. Psychologically, I'm sure if I sit down on a couch, uh, 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 an analyst would sort of say, that's why you chose art, basically. Mm -hmm. So, I, when I was working at that betting shop, there was an English guy, and I would write, write, write out his bets for him. So this English guy, I would, I would always help him. And I think uh, it was intriguing for him. So one day he said, w w w are you not studying or whatever? And I said, look, I'm studying, uh, I want to do drama, and I'm saving up to go to a drama school. Um, Next day he turned up and he said, um, this is uh, the address of my solicitor. Tell me how much money you want and, and, and tell me which school you want to go to and how much money you will need to keep you going. And everyone in my betting shop where I worked were like, oh, they could, my name is Bhaskar. They, they used to call me Bushka. There you go. Bushka, that's very good. <laughs> 
here are the people I work with them. They love me. I'd make a cup of tea. They said, Pascal, you make a lovely cup of tea or whatever, whatever. Uh, but they still could not sort of, uh, you know, pronounce my name properly. Pushka, Pushka, that's lovely, lovely. And I was touched, uh, 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 tears in my eyes. And I said to him, I said, look, no. I said, I said, uh, you know, politely, politely. And he was taken aback. Well, uh, he, he didn't see that as an insult. And I hope he didn't. And uh, everyone said, do you know who he is? Actually, he's got, he's got his children. They, they don't care for him. But uh, he's, he worked in South Africa, an English guy. And he's got, he's got shares in Rothmans and, and cigarette companies, which was, you know, people smoked a lot. And if you had shares in them, uh, an older guy with loads of money, his children didn't care because they were all rich as well. And he lived in, in Wood Green uh, in, a, in, in a neighboring area. And he wanted to help me. I did not take that money because I wanted to do it myself. I don't know why. I thought, if I go to a drama school, I want to do it my way. And not, not, not in a stubborn way, but it's that pride. Um, so I didn't. I mean, he didn't see that as an insult. That, that was the check ready for me. Uh, 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 but no, I didn't. The drama school I used to go in the evenings, um, the headmaster, which we had no connection with, the evening schools was a different area and the full-time drama school was totally different. So he called me in one day. He said, when you come in early, can I, can I have a word with you? And I thought, my God, have I done something wrong? But he has nothing to do with the evening classes where I'm learning uh, speech, drama and movement. And he said, you live in Herringay? We are in Herringay and we have a great uh, relationship with the Herringay Council. And because you live in Herringay, they would prefer that someone from Herringay would come to this school and become an actor or whatever, would go out uh, uh, and, 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 and thrive. Again, everything was there on, on, on a plate. Um, I didn't take that because I didn't, uh, the school was known for musical theatre. And, and I thought, well, um, I, I, I liked uh, playing harmonium and, and doing semi-classical music. Uh, again, I learned that playing harmonium over here uh, in, in, in Britain. In our town, there were two mandirs. There were several mandirs, but in one mandir, uh, which was a Swami Narayan mandir, and they had a harmonium. And I always wanted to play the harmonium. But no, no one would let me touch the harmonium because it belonged to one uh, pandit or whoever was managing the, the, the mandir. So no one would let you touch it. Uh, um, uh, so, so I, I mean, I digress. Uh, uh, my father, when he came from Africa uh, to India, he brought a Hitachi. Uh, a cassette player and I loved singing uh, I would be singing away uh, the Hindi songs or, or bhajan because we had a mandir next door and I would go and help them out to play the, the drum Nagaru Kena play. so during the arti time I was always there they would always call Bhaskar over Bhaskar Ao uh, you know uh, you know Tari uh, Shet. I would always be there so my father brought this uh, cassette player uh, uh, and I wanted to record but no one told me that if you have a cassette which has that thing that's broken, you cannot record over, basically. And I wish that someone had actually said, actually, you need a, a cassette uh, that, that hasn't got that thing broken. At, uh, 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 and if it's not broken, you can record or whatever. I wanted to hear my own voice. I, I would have been somebody else, actually. Uh, and actually, that, that's where I think somehow when it comes to art, I, I, I think we sort of think that uh, the Gujaratis would think, that, you know, that there's no money in it. Actually, uh, go and become a doctor or engineer or something or whatever. Uh, but but don't, don't go into art because there, there's no money in it. You won't be able to look after your family, basically. So, um, yeah, I was asking you about your first break. First, first break, yeah. yeah. My first break came uh, when I was at drama school in, in London. And someone said, I had barely begun. And someone said, BBC in uh, Pebble Mill, in Birmingham, Pebble Mill, uh, they were looking for, they were doing a, 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 a film uh, called uh, um, Garlands. Uh, and they were looking for this particular character, uh, a, 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 an Indian boy. They can't find him. Uh, you know, they, 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 they actually, they, there, are, there aren't that many actors actually of that age group. And uh, so I rang them up and I said, oh, by the way, and I again lied. I said, oh, I'm, 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 I'm in Birmingham 
And they said, well, do you live in Birmingham? I said, um, I probably lied and said, yes, I do. So they said, well, if you live in Birmingham, then come tomorrow or the day after uh, and uh, the director will see you. So that was my lunch money. I said, with that, I bought the ticket, <laughs> uh, 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 went to Birmingham. Uh, I don't know how I got from the station to, to Pebble Mill. I think it's a long way away. It was a, uh, I might have got there by taxi or whatever. So whatever money I had, I probably saved up uh, uh, and, and spent there. I turned up and then they gave me the script. Now they give you a script and you have to, you have to uh, um, uh, do the dialogues with the producer and, and the director. The director watches you and the producer reads the other lines. And I, I, wasn't, I don't think I was very good at that. But my character didn't need... Um, he had lines, but he didn't have like monologues or monologues. Anyway, I did my interview back on the on the train. They said, oh, shall we get you a taxi to the station? I said, no, 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 don't worry. I, again, I might have lied and said, no, no, I'm, I'm walking uh, to my home. Anyway, anyway I got to the station uh, 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 and uh, on the platform, who was standing there for the train, but the director whom I just saw, Horace Ove. And he said, he said, oh, you, you're going to London. And I said, yes, yes. I mean, you know, he, he, didn't, he didn't sort of bat an eyelid. And um, on the train, uh, we sat opposite each other. And he, he started asking me about my life and everything. And mm, quite a long story short, I probably told him who I was, where I came from, blah, blah, blah. And the next thing is I got the role. But there was this catch-22. Earlier on, you had to have an equity card, Actors Union card. There was a catch-22. Without the card, you can't get the job. You can't get the job without, without, without this. But, but, but if, if BBC uh, approved to, to union that, look, we cannot get anyone, but, but this person, um, they, 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 they would give you a card. So I got my equity card just by, by, by chance, where somebody told me uh, that who had gone for a, for, a, for a role, he didn't succeed, but he heard from the producers saying, if you know of any, any boy, uh, around this age group, let us let us know. So I turned up. I got my equity card from that by doing play for today. There, there were lovely, lovely stories. A lot of writers, directors got 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 jobs out um, out of play for today. A uh, 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 slot, um, a garland. Yeah, that's what it was. And and uh, I went back to my drama school. I had barely begun, and I said, look, I have a job, the TV job. And I was, I, was, I was literally sort of shaking because, because they would go, you haven't even finished your, your, your three-year training. You know, this is only my first year and you applied for a job. And that again, I might have done it naively. Uh, I, I, I was in a, in a, in a telephone a booth uh, uh, putting, you know, I think two pence coin in it and thinking, I hope it doesn't run out. I hope the BBC would pick up the phone quickly and transfer it to the producer and I would get to talk to them. I only had a handful of coins uh, and, and would say, yeah, 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 come. Okay, tomorrow, uh, yes, I'll be there. And, and, and then uh, end of conversation, basically. So my drama school was an independent drama school. Uh, it wasn't affiliated with the, with the government or whatever. So they understood. So they said, no, 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 go, go and do that. You'll get an equity card. So I became an envy of all my... English uh, 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 colleagues, uh, 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 um, all the other students in a drama school, because even then, I my English was zilch. I I wasn't very communicative. I knew I wanted to do something, so I went back and they were like, "You got an equity card, really?" So I said, "Yeah," but I was still kind of a meek, very sort of uh, not not saying much. I thought I've got an equity card. Go back to drama school, but lo and behold. Someone I had worked with was given a job um, in the theatre and he, he, he had to speak Punjabi, Hindi in a play plus English uh, and he said, I can't, but actually I've just worked with an actor who, who is a kind of a real McCoy, uh, you know, he, he comes from India, he's very, very Indian and actually this would suit him. And again, the play was about racism. It was a German play. It was a, an English guy who lived in Germany a guy called Roy Kift, and he had written a play about how Germans were using uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the Turkish people. Because uh, the Turkish uh, uh, people were also invited in Germany to again sort of to work and, 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 and live there. So the play was about the racism there on a, on a, on a, on a, on a campsite. 
So he came to, because uh, him being an Englishman, he wrote the play uh, where, whereby a black family and, and an English family, uh, they are living on a campsite side by side. It's a, it's a holiday time. But this Indian boy, he's cleaning uh, the campsite. He's picking up the rubbish and whatever. That was my character. So anyway, uh, they, they said, oh, um, there's a play in Kilburn at the Tricycle Theatre. If you want it, it's yours. I went to see the director. And I loved, loved uh, meeting him. And, 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 and so I went back to school and I said, oh, I've got a job. So they must be thinking, who the hell is he? What's going on here? You know, he doesn't even speak English. He's very, he's very shy. But, but uh, so they said, go and do it and come back. I went back and we started doing a Midsummer Night's Dream. Uh, I was given a part of Thisney. Uh, and, 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 and anyway, again, something happened and someone rang me from Polka Children's Theatre. And they said, we're doing Mowgli. We can't find anyone uh, to, to play because we, we need an Indian boy. And then they saw me and they're like, oh, real McCoy. Well, he, he's, he's, he's the kind of a real Indian. You know, we, we've got him. So I, I went to see them. I auditioned uh, a guy called Richard Gill who ran Polka Children's Theatre. And, and he's an assistant director, uh, a Janet, a Janet Marshall. I think if I remember the name right. And I, I did my audition piece on, on a stage. And, and Janet told me, uh, you know, his assistant director, he said, when you left the theatre, he leapt up in the air. He said, he jumped and he said, I've got my Mowgli, I've got my Mowgli. So again, went back to drama school and they said, look, go, go. <laughs> Although I worked for a year, I saved up money, I paid my fees in full. Uh, I, 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 I don't know how much, a lot of money in those days. Um, I asked people around. I, I said, I still want to finish my, my studies. Because I think that's what um, Gujaratis do believe in doing things properly, not cutting corners. Because I've come all the way here. My father invited me from, 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 from Gujarat to come here to study. And, and I need to finish this. Um, and even then, they didn't know uh, that while I was doing BBC, uh, uh, play, whatever, they left me alone. I, I was very, uh, um, uh, that was very magnanimous about my parents uh, because my mother did not study that much. My father, n uh, neither. So, so here are two sort of, uh, 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 here, here, you know, here you've got mum and dad not knowing English very well. My mum worked in factory. The day we turned up, two days later, she was in Allgate East in a, in a sewing factory. And my father had laid down all those things that they'd come because my father borrowed money. We only came in Britain with three pound, uh, uh, I think uh, three pound or two pound or whatever. You could not bring more than that. Uh, so, 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 yeah, my, even then my parents uh, didn't know that, that, that I was studying to be an actor, basically. And when you told them about your Mowgli role and this, what did they have to say? No, I, 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 I actually, actually prior to Mowgli, I did, uh, um, I belonged to uh, a Gujarati drama group at Bharti Vidya Bhavan. Now, those Gujaratis who had a theatre group in Kampala, Jinja, in Uganda, the same people came here when Idi Amin kicked everyone out. Nareshwar. Uh, then Nareshwar of Kolorama, uh, Pritam Pandya, Pritam. but Natubai. Uh, my uncle who just died. Uh, oh, yes, yes, yes. He died just a, a, a few days ago. And I, I yeah, he, he was the, the main uh, 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 organizer. I mean, he, he, he did a Gujarati film long ago when he gave a role to Sanjeev Kumar who was a, a, an actor and became a very big, big actor. So he actually set up this, again, uh, the Gujarati drama group at Bhavan, Bharti Vidya Bhavan. They said, we had it in East Africa where people would come and watch the plays and, you know, uh, have the entertainment uh, as well as have the Hindi films that they used to watch. So we started the, 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 the in Bhavan, we started that. As well as, well as doing full length plays, they would have one act a sort of one act play competition every year and i would every year win uh, the best actress role there was a guy there, there was a well known uh, 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 a theater practitioner called chanchi mehta chandravadan chimanlal mehta big name big name and first first year he he was the he was the the adjudicator he was the judge and he saw me on 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 stage doing a, a play called tin bandar and afterwards, you know, everyone was scared of him because he was he was, was well-known person. He traveled the world. 
he had translated Shakespeare into Gujarati. Uh, 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 it, you know, he used to go all over the world uh, and watch a different form of uh, 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 plays and, and, and cultures and would translate, it, uh, translate that in Gujarati. And he said to me, he said, what do you want to do? And I said, I like mine. He said, well, in that case, go to, um, go to France, go to, go to um, uh, uh, Lecoq school. Um, and I thought, no, bugger it. I don't even know French, let alone English. I don't know. So, so I could have gone to, I wanted to go to France and study mime, but I thought, I don't know, don't know French. So uh, that, 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 that basically stopped me. But uh, uh, every, every year I would win this, every year. Uh, I, I would find a play, I would get actors together, I would find a director, a guy called Ashwin Patel. Uh, you know, he loved acting. I mean, he actually gave up. Uh, he had small parts in Mind Your Language and, and Ain't It Half What Mum. But he, 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 again, he married a Gujarati lady and, 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 you know, there weren't that many jobs around. You know, he would get one line in, in, a, in a play or one line in a, in a TV play in a year. How, how, you know, how can you make a living when you have a family? So one day, as soon as the play finished, um, the competition finished, my parents came to watch it. Of course, they would come and watch it. And they were on their way uh, back to Turnpike Lane and um, on an on a, on a, on a, on a underground platform. One critic, Gujarati critic, was talking about my performance. Said, that guy who won Bhaskar, wasn't he good or whatever? And I remember um, Pankaj Vora, his name was. He, he told me a couple of months later or, 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 or a couple of days later, he said, I, I met your parents. He said, I mentioned your name and your dad, he was away from me. He leapt and he said, that's my son. That's my son who won. So my mom and dad, he said, your mom and dad were so, so happy uh, that, that you won and how good you were. But even then, they didn't know that, that I was going to be a full-time actor. They didn't know. They thought I was doing some art uh, at, at university or college, yeah. So how did all these um, uh, uh, big films come, come your way? You know, you uh, performed in The Octopussy, Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom. Yeah. How, how did all that come about? Right. Um, what happens, you go to a film school, um, then or, or go to a theatre school, and at the end, at the end of your uh, sort of uh, uh, course, uh, during your final year, uh, they you do a, a production, whereby a theatre school would invite casting directors, uh, and invite agents, theatrical agents. Uh, without that, actually, you cannot get good roles, unless you're lucky. So, so um, I left my theatre. My I finished my. Um, uh, I didn't finish my theater training. I was working, working. I got an agent. And through an agent, I had a job at the National Theater in a play called A Map of the World, written by David Hare and directed by David Hare. It had Russian Seth in it, a well-known, well-known actor, Diana Quick, Bill Nye. Anyway, casting director came to see the play because they were casting for Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom, basically. And there were small, small parts. Uh, 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 in the film. Um, so I, I, I got a small role in it uh, through that because this casting director watched me but watched also there weren't that many that many Indian actors, Asian actors around in those days. I got that. I got a role in Octopussy again through a theatrical agent and through a casting director called Debbie McWilliams and, and, and I, I got a lovely role in Octopussy um, um, uh, filming at Pinewood Studios. Uh, Indiana Jones, we filmed that at the Elstree Studios, watching uh, uh, Harrison Ford. My dressing room was three doors away from it. And as I was going towards my, my dressing room, there, Indiana Jones, Indy, walking towards me with a hat and, and the whip and, and said, hi. Uh, and I was like, I was the, we were the only two people uh, 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 in that corridor. And you see that and you think, you know, you, you're blown away. Octopussy was great. You, you're watching. I was playing a, a, a houseboy, a butler to Louis Jordan, a well-known actor in Hollywood, in, in France. Uh, I was playing his butler. And then you are watching uh, uh, Roger Moore, uh, you know, uh, do the scene. You're watching it for, you know, from, from, from a, a, a distance away. Um, and you're acting next to, standing next to Louis Jordan because you're playing his butler. Slowly, slowly, you learn a lot. Um, uh, Kabir Bedi. Our, our Indian actor, he was, he, was, he was in it as well. He was playing a baddie. 
So you watch all this and slowly, slowly you learn. I, I learned by watching uh, and by making mistakes. Uh, as I said, I didn't finish my, my, my theatre training. Um, these films came, came my way. There, there were small parts, but it adds to your, uh, to your CV. Uh, Did you find that uh, being an Asian, you predominantly managed to get Asian roles? Was, was that an advantage you, you took for yourself? Yes. In my case, I was lucky because growing up in India, in Gujarat, I sort of knew my culture very well. So if there was an Indian part came my way, if I was auditioning for a part, I felt very comfortable playing that part. I didn't have to put on an accent. There's a lot of my, whereas a lot of my contemporaries who grew up over here, um, they were they were British basically. You know, although they were uh, 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 Indians or Pakistanis or whatever, um, but they they when it came uh, to playing an Indian part, uh, and in those days, you know, the roles were very very tiny, uh, but they felt very uncomfortable. So they had to put on an accent. But with me, I suppose learning. Uh, uh, Hindi, Gujarati, Sanskrit, back home. It gave me that kind of a, a, a background. So if I read something, I, I would go, okay, I know who he is. I don't have to pretend. Uh, and and th that I felt very comfortable with. I didn't have to sort of put on an accent. Um, the roles were tiny, but, but I was learning by watching people. If I was in a theater, uh, uh, at the National Theater, for example, to date, I think I've done about nine to ten plays. But my first play there at the National Theater, I, in between scenes, I wouldn't be in my dressing room. I'd be watching actors, um, uh, not copying them, but seeing how they're doing it, day, uh, performance after performance. Just sometimes it would be just watching it, watching it, not, not, not even realizing that probably I'm, I'm, I'm learning something. I, when I was growing up, I didn't follow football or whatever, although I played cricket all my life in India. Uh, my, my father stopped smoking and he saved up money and sent me a proper cricket bat and proper cricket ball rather than those sponge balls or whatever. Um, um, in, in England, I grew up watching plays in, in, a, in a pub. I would go and watch a, a theater play. Uh, you, 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 you stand up in a queue and there are returns. And if you were an equity member, you, you got a discount. You watched a matinee show you know, for five pounds or something. So I always watched a plays. I watched uh, 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 films, European films, German films, French films, Spanish films. The subtitles didn't bother me, didn't bother me. And I watched uh, films there. Uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't into kind of one of those multiplex. I mean, multiplex started later on, but I wasn't into watching rambles and whatever, like, uh, like uh, you know, bang, 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 bang uh, movies. Um, uh, you know, the, the sort of the films of the 80s or whatever. But, 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 uh, but um, American art movies, I, I, uh, then, then I would go and watch uh, Indian art movies. Uh, uh, but uh, there weren't that many that, that, uh, that, that came our way, apart from Satyajit Ray's movies or, or a few others. Um, which again BFI would would uh, would would, would uh, present it to 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 Britain. So I watched uh, uh, theater uh, uh, plays and films, and I learned a lot. Today there's a discussion about the so-called ethnic roles, hmm. uh, and uh, is there a change in that way? You know that you can any any play any role. You know, or a black actor can play any yeah, role. You yeah. Know? When I started, the roles were. Far and few between. When I started acting, a lot of black actors found themselves very uh, comfortable being uh, in, a, in an English play, in, 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 in Shakespeare, in, in, in classical plays. And also uh, the white directors, if, if, I, if I can use that term, they found it easier to cast black actors in a classical role, in a classical play, in Shakespeare, than, uh, 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 than the Asian actors, Indian actors. I, I, I think it could be the, the culture is the kind of the same, the, the religion is the same. Whereas they found, I think, I think they found that then there weren't that many uh, uh, Asian actors about at that time. Um, so I did not see many Asian actors in, in, in classical plays, basically. Where, where actually you cut the mustard, you actually learn a lot. But we weren't cast in, in, those, in those plays, no. Uh, I was only cast in a play where it said, Indian or, 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 or a Muslim or a Hindu 
or, or of that age or age group. Okay. Otherwise, they would not venture out. I, I, I was auditioning uh, uh, um, uh, for a company in Wales uh, and I went to see them. I saw the director. I did my, um, you know, uh, for, a, uh, for a role, theatre role. You do your classical piece and then you do your modern piece. And, you know, if it requires singing, then you, you sang. And at the end of it, uh, the director in front of me, uh, uh, an, an English guy, and he said, he said, ah, you're a Patel. I said, yes. He said, um, shouldn't you be running a, a corner shop or, or, or shouldn't you be a doctor. Uh, uh, yeah, or a doctor or a post office? No, he didn't even say doctor. He, he said, uh, shouldn't, shouldn't you be running a, 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 a corner shop or a chemist or a post office? And, and, and I, I didn't see that as an insult. I thought, well, OK, if that's your mindset, I haven't got the role. That didn't deter me. They, that, the, the, that didn't make me go home and go, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to give this up. Another thing happened, is, and, and, and that's a good thing about Gujaratis, we never rely on any handouts. We never rely on handouts. And while I was still uh, practicing to be an actor, and I was an actor, uh, a jobbing actor, all of a sudden, we had a three-day-a-week. And as an actor, when you're not working, you go and, you, you go and sign on in a dole office. And there I was in Tottenham in a dole queue, which was a norm. You know, the work was plenty at that time. You, you left a job on a Friday, for example, and then you, you, you had a job on a Monday. It's, it's when Margaret Thatcher came, she just deunionized everything and got rid of everything and said, oh, this can be done abroad or in Far East or whatever. But anyway, in those days, but all of a sudden, this three, three day a week turned up. I was in a queue. I looked behind. My mother standing in a queue. I didn't let my mother know that I was, I was in that queue. And I thought, what, what are you doing? You want to be an actor, but there aren't that many jobs about. There's a lot of uh, 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 hanging around in between. Where, what will you do in order to keep you going? I didn't want my mother to see me in a dole queue. And I made up my mind that from now on, even if I have no money or whatever, I will go and do anything in order to keep me going. Still, be an actor, but, but, but keep earning any kind of a job I would do. So I made sure that in between acting, I always did whatever, market research to you name it. Uh, I, I, I've done it. You have to, because I wanted to make sure that I'm not going to be an embarrassment or, or, or give my mother a kind of a, a heartache thinking. And also, my father invited me over here, invited the whole family here. I, I wanted to do something in order to sort of make them proud uh, of me. Uh, and I, I, I think uh, that, that's a Gujarati thing as well, I think. Yeah. Mm. Do you have any regrets uh, rejecting any roles which you would have taken, but then you felt, oh, I wish I had taken that role? When Andrew Lloyd Webber was um, casting for Bombay Dreams, directed by Stephen Pimlot, he's, he's no longer with us, but, but a well-known director. Um, I thought, ah, I, I want to do this. Um, you know, I'm not a musical actor, but there were roles where you didn't uh, need to sing. So I, I, I wasn't seen for it because, the, 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 you know, uh, there was no role for me. And then second time, they were seeing more people. Again, a friend of mine said, Oscar, there is nothing in it for you, an actress friend of mine. But all of a sudden, my agent got a call saying, oh, uh, this part was going to go to Side Jeffrey, but, but, uh, but for um, health reasons, he can't be in it. And actually, they're, 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 they're looking at other actors. So anyway, I auditioned. Um, and then they invited me again. Um, at the first audition, they said, can you sing? I said, yes, uh, but I'm not a very good uh, uh, with English songs. But, uh, but yeah, a Hindi song, yeah. And they said, yes, yeah, sing, sing us. So I sang a Hindi film song. I wasn't, I wasn't sort of shy about it. I thought, well, they want to hear me sing. So I did that. I did the same thing at uh, a Windsor Theatre Royal. Uh, they, they were seeing actors for, um, for, a, for a pantomime. So they said, can you sing? And I said, well, um, uh, was it Baba Black Sheep or something? I sang, uh, I, didn't, I don't think I sang Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell, but, but I sang something. I wasn't, I wasn't 
shy about it. I wasn't afraid. But at the same time, I wasn't like, I wasn't like oh, I'll do anything. I, I thought, well, okay, they're asking me genuinely, can you sing? And I'll sing something. So for Bombay Dreams, I did that. And two days later, they called me again. There was a recall. So the, I met the director again. He said, how are you? Fine. He said, um, I, I just, I just want, want to do a couple of scenes again. Uh, uh, and, 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 you know, I was, I was impressed with, with the first audition. He said, do you have any questions? And I said, yes, I do. I, I said, um, uh, this old part is a lot older than me. Uh, 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 he said, don't worry, I don't have a problem. There's makeup and everything. We'll make you look older. Anyway, I got the role. Uh, I started rehearsing the role. Uh, a week later, I, I felt that uh, there was something missing there. So I openly, I went to the director. Now, here's a, here's a big musical that was happening in the West End. Andrew Lloyd Webber investing money uh, into this, uh, uh, this musical, Bombay Dreams. There's a buzz going on, and I'm part of that. There's so many cameras every day would come and rehearse, and A.R. Rahman was doing the music. So you, you're around with all these people. Anyway, two, a week later, a week and a half later, I said to Stephen Pimlot, the director, I said, um, um, I, I need five minutes, and I knew how, how busy he was. And he said, no, no, that, that's fine. I, he gave me five minutes. Uh, and I said, I'm not comfortable playing these small roles. And, 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 and he said, but six months later, this role will be yours. But then I found out that they invited an actor from India to, to play the role. And they wanted me to play um, the, the, his understudy. So I was like, for one year, first of all, they said six months to understudy somebody and play other small parts. But now I realize that for one year, that actor is here to play that role. And for one year, I'll be on stage thinking, what am I doing? I'm, I'm, I'm playing, and, and they, 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 I have no qualms in playing small roles. No, no, because you know, there are no small roles, you know, the, you know uh, um, and, and I, I understand that. But there I just thought, no, this is not something right. The money was good, you know, a year's employment in the West End, in a musical that the whole world was looking, looking forward to. The whole of India was looking forward to. And the director said, okay, fine. You want to go? I said, yes, I want to go. And I just, I just, I just left the theater. Didn't even think about a year's employment or whatever. I wasn't afraid of actually doing in between jobs, doing anything, anything. But you know what? Something happened. And uh, a week later, two weeks later, uh, uh, BBC were, were doing um, a murder in mind and, and there was a lead part in it and I got the lead part and that led to and I, I got the role I did it and that actually when it came out it got me a, a, a bigger agent so so I took a lot of chances a lot of risks as well yeah, yeah. Mm. a lot, lot of risks yeah. Yeah. if I wasn't uh, if, if I wasn't happy I, I, I sort of went no actually you know, you you're not you're not you're uh, you're not doing enough justification to yourself. Mm. Um, long ago, a German company came to young Germans came to London. Um, they they were looking for an Indian actor to play the lead role in in a film that they had done a documentary about uh, how how Pakistanis or Indians left Pakistan via illegal way ended up in in Germany in East Germany. And East Germany used to shove them into West Germany, into topple their not not topple but topple their one second. I'll, I'll just um, to 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 actually unbalance uh, West Germany basically. Anyway, these two Germans came to London. They were auditioning people for a lead part. My brother-in-law was in in Germany, a Gujarati guy. He was in Germany. So I said, look, I need to learn this German. Uh, uh, and he said, and the word is uh, a scheisse. And he said, what, what are you doing? And I said, well, it, I, had to, I had to say scheisse, uh, 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 segal or something like that. And he said, do you know what you're saying? I said, no, but th that's why I'm asking you, because you know German. And he said, he said, you're saying shit, shit, shit. I said, okay, fine. So he, I, 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 before auditioning, my brother-in-law uh, sort of told me what it was because I, I, I couldn't go to anyone else. I didn't know that many Germans or English who knew German. 
and, and and I saw these two young Germans, very tall. Um, you know, uh, they they uh, they used to joke with me, you know, not not in a racist way, but they'll say kleine Schwarzman, and they're like, a, you know, they were tall Germans, uh, and they were young as well. And they had seen, um, they had gone to a casting director who did the casting of My Beautiful Laundrette and Octopussy. So the same casting director uh, uh, gave my name, gave uh, um, you know uh, names of other actors as well. Uh, I met them and I I, I read the script. Uh, they said, we will only give you the script in English, but your character speaks German, Deutsch, uh, broken German. And we, we, we won't give you the German script. We will give you the script in English. And if you get the role, you will come to Germany. You will learn in German uh, as if you're learning from, from, from day one. And then on the day, we want you to actually uh, improvise, not improvise, bearing in mind uh, uh, what you have, uh, translate German in your, in your head. Um, Anyway, they saw me first, and then they went away. They came back again for a recall, and I had no knowledge about film acting because you know all the roles that you play as an actor, uh, those roles were small roles, tiny roles. You know, you don't learn a lot. You've got to play a big role to 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 learn something. Anyway, the second audition, and I said to them, I said, look, you know, you 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 want me to audition for this small role, a kind of a medium-sized role, but the lead role actually. If you don't see me for the lead, lead role, I don't want to play any other part. I don't know what, what gave me the courage to say that. I did it. And uh, after my second audition, they went away, knowing fully well that I have no film acting uh, experience. They came back and they said, actually, you've got the role. And he said, I, I said, what later on? I said, what made you give me the role? Having no knowledge of film acting. Because in this country, we we are more uh, we 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 more we concentrate on theatre than 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 TV or film acting. In America, it's it's a different trend. You know, they 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 cut their mustard, they they cut their cloth on 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 films on on cameras, whereas here we do it on stage basically. I got the role. The film went all over the world, Venice Film Festival, and everywhere, and you know, lead role. I mean, every scene, and I learned a lot from from a German. Uh, director Jan Schutte and the writer Thomas Strittmatter, you know he's no longer with us, because they wrote a beautiful uh, uh, a film uh, in black and white as well. We shot it when there was a East Germany, West Germany. Uh, uh, we shot it in Berlin as well, West Berlin. And there I am again. There I am. Uh, Jan said, oh, "We're going from Hamburg. Now we will go into into West Berlin." So we we leave uh, West Germany. We leave Hamburg. We leave West Germany. We go into East Germany, and then we go into West Berlin, and I think, what's going on? This is Germany's one. If it's east and west, there should be a, a, a straight line. But but then 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 I was still in. I was learning. I was I was being in a in a world that, as well as playing a part, as well as being in a in a feature film, it was another world again. Likewise, same as leaving Uganda, going to India, coming to Britain, again finding myself. In another world, learning German from scratch uh, uh, every day, like, like like a child, and then being in a film, then filming a film, uh, 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 yeah, uh, 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 filming everything, and then going to another world where I just I I um, then you're in a West Berlin uh, uh, metro, uh, not metro, but uh, what what do we call in Germany, U-Bahns or, uh, and and then he said, now we're in West Berlin. Now we're going uh, through East East Berlin, and then we're back into into West West Berlin. So, tell me a bit about this role. How did you get into Emmerdale? And um, it's quite a good role of Rishi Sharma. Yes, um, ITV Emmerdale again. They've been they've been. It's a second uh, running soap, uh, which now they call it continuing drama uh, in in Britain. Um, it was I Emmerdale Farm, now it's Emmerdale. Now, how did I get the role? Uh, in the beginning, um, they were only looking uh, at Asian actors coming from Yorkshire because they wanted to be, they wanted an actor who came from Yorkshire. So he could have a, he could have a Yorkshire accent, basically. Um, they saw people, I, I, I didn't know anything about it, they saw people and they weren't happy. So, you know, the, 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 then they said, look, cast the net a little bit further uh, away from Yorkshire. 
So then, then they started seeing actors from all over Britain. Uh, I went to see them. Uh, prior to meeting me, they would give you like the whole bio of this guy that they've created because it was a regular part. If it's a regular part, then they, they, they give you as much information uh, uh, so that you know, you know who, who this person is. Although you're only auditioning uh, um, um, uh, two or three pages, so you have an idea. And then I, I thought, well, I'm very good at feeling, uh, um, playing myself, basically. But, but, but that's not what I was thinking. I thought, on a page, this is what the situation is. I'll be genuine to this situation rather than trying to pretend I'm from Yorkshire and I have a Yorkshire accent or, or, or what not. Um, and yeah, at my interview, I just did that. I just, I just played the role. I played the situation uh, uh, in that scene. Then, <laughs> when I, uh, again, I was a jobbing actor. So I then grew, uh, I used to grow a beard. Uh, why? Because after 9-11, all the roles that we were seen for, they were all terrorists. Exactly. All terrorists. Uh, one line, two line, saying Allahu Akbar or whatever. Never ever. And, and, and if, uh, again, go, uh, going back, every time that they had a, an, an, uh, an Indian character or a Hindu, it was always sort of in a kind of a negative uh, way. You know, when I played shopkeepers, it was like, please take my money, don't, don't rob me, or please don't hurt me, or whatever. So you never played anyone uh, who, was, who had a kind of a bit of a stamina, oomph in him or her. But the writers were English writers. So they, they themselves, I don't blame them. Uh, they, they didn't know us. They didn't know me. They didn't know our culture. If they did, it was from a, from a distance. So do, do I blame them? Not really. It's now that we have young British Asians, Gujaratis. If, you know, if you're talking about Gujaratis, now they, they've sort of, uh, they're born and brought up over here. You know, they, 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 they know who they are. Uh, they, 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 don't, they, they don't want to play one or two lines or whatever. They would reject that, uh, that, that then sort of take the role because they felt, no, I, I don't want to start my career playing small roles, whereas for, for me, it was the opposite. But, but then I don't regret that because I learned a lot. Uh, um, um, so for Rishi Sharma, they said, oh, now we want to screen test you with a lot of other actresses who will be playing your, your, your wife. So there they had uh, 10 actors uh, and 10 actresses uh, and also my character uh, married an, an English lady. So then I go to Leeds for the screen test and I said to my agent, I'll have to get rid of my beard. I said, I'm not very comfortable about it because if I don't get the role, you know, it, it will be a while be, uh, before I grow this beard to play a terrorist. So my agent said, look, they bluntly said, you know, for screen tests, they need to see how you look because mine is a businessman. Rishi Sharma is a young, uh, but no, when he was young, uh, he married an English lady. He went to Yorkshire. He set up a, a, a sweet factory. Again, uh, it was a good idea that they made him a kind of a, a self-made person. Uh, not, not running a corner shop or, 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 or running a chemist or whatever. I mean, for once, I think my wife said that I'll be happy that now that I'm happy, you're not wearing those, uh, uh, those uh, colorful sweaters. Because every time I did something, they would put me in a kind of a very sort of how an ethnic guy or Indian guy would wear these colorful sweaters or whatever. I was never ever looking suited and booted. It was my character, Rishi Sharma, self-made man, a millionaire. He was, you know, suited, booted, looked, looked. Uh, uh, kind of a refined uh, 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 gentleman. So I got rid of my beard um, and I got the part. And that's, that's nine years ago now. Um, you learn a lot by doing it every day. It's, uh, it's a soap, continuing drama. You, the scripts arrive two weeks before. In the beginning, it's a little bit hard, but your, your, your brain's a, a, a lovely machine. You, you automatically start learning quickly how do you uh, do your do you memorize your lines or, or uh, you, you can um, adapt to the script or you have to stick to the script you have to stick to the script you you cannot improvise mm. because because in a continuing drama if i am doing something unbeknown to me um, uh, they have already set up uh, a plot uh, that, that that's going to uh, uh, happen in six months time uh, or they, they they have a yearly meeting 
they, they, if they have a meeting uh, now, they would be talking about what will happen in 2022, uh, February. So it's, 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 it's a big, big machine. Um, um, uh, so, yes, you learn quickly. And then I decided not to do a New Yorkshire accent. I just thought, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's an Indian businessman. He went to Yorkshire. He's a well-traveled man. Uh, you know, he's very comfortable being himself. Uh, so I decided not to do a, a Yorkshire accent. I thought, no, he's a businessman. And then, then, then I look at a lot of um, uh, uh, Indian businessmen around who are very successful. They, they, they don't have a particular accent. So I just thought I'll be truthful to myself, basically. And then feel very comfortable playing that. What's your experience with the rest of the cast of the soap? Great. I think in a soap, I think what happens, especially in, in Emmerdale, um, within Yorkshire, uh, they're all regular actors and we become a one family. So, so whatever is given to us, thrown at us, you just, you just play that basically. Um, you, you, because the directors, they know what they're doing. The writers, they know what they're doing. The producers, they know what they're doing. The storyliners, they know what they're doing. Um, if, they, if, if they bring in something, they do a lot of research. So if they have to uh, bring in another Indian character, um, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very... Now, now, everyone does a lot of research. So if they give it to you, it really surprises you that, oh, they really got it right. Whereas long ago, I would turn up uh, at, at an audition for TV or whatever, and at the end of my interview, I would say, do you mind uh, if, 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 I, if I tell you something? And they'd go, now we've, we're finished with him now. Uh, you know, he doesn't even know that, whether he's got the role or not. Now, what does he want to say? And I would say, you know, the names in this, uh, the names of the characters, the, uh, the, the first name is a Hindu name, but you've given him a Muslim name. So it would be, they would know, the English writers would not know what a correct Hindu name would be. You know, we know that if you come from Gujarat, you know, you're a Gujarati. If you're from, if you're from Madhya Pradesh, you, you know, you have a, you have a different name, culture. Uh, so, so anyway, so you, you, would, you would correct them. And, and do you know what? They would say, look, thank you so much. Uh, uh, and, 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 and you take pride in that because you, you're helping them. You're helping them, you're correcting them, but in a positive way. When you, uh, you explained before that you actually come from a, a stage actor, how, how did you feel when, you know, when in the society sometimes the soap actors are regarded as a little bit lower? How did you yeah. feel yourself? Well, uh, when I started acting, uh, if you had said, oh, do you want to be in a, in a soap a drama? I would say, no, no, I don't. Because in those days, um, uh, in the sort of uh, 80s, uh, um, early 90s, early 90s, actors wanted to do a lot of other stuff theater, radio, you know, if you got a soap role, they, they thought that you got stuck in that. And then when you leave, people think that you can't play anyone but that character. Now it's the other way around because a soap world, uh, continuing drama is so fast. It, it happens, you have a one scene, you have one hour and 15 minutes, you learn your lines uh, when you're given those scripts two weeks before, you learn those lines, you turn up on the day, you have a line run with your other actors and then the director tells you where he or she wants you to put you. And then, then you rehearse with that. The next thing is you do a technical rehearsal for the cameras because it's a multi-camera. You don't have one camera. You have cameras there, there and, and somewhere else as well. You do that and then when everyone's happy, you do the makeup check and then the next thing is you go for a take. So all the choices that you make during that take um, you somehow have decided that, that that's how my character would, would, would react. Unless a director tells you uh, otherwise. Um, and it's very fast. It's very quick. And it's so challenging. So now everyone else would, would see that, oh my God, uh, being in a soap, it, it's such a very challenging job. Um, and I, 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 I take pride in that. Going from theatre to film, as I said when I did the German film play, the lead role, it, it, it was so, so, so different because my theatre acting was so over the top. Whereas in film, you required little. 
But my, my German uh, 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 director friend, uh, he taught me. He, uh, I used to watch films, but, 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 but I learned from him that watch films, watch films, watch films, how people are acting, how people are portraying their characters. Do less, but do it all inside, from inside. Camera will, camera will pick it up. So, 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 so and, and I found that challenging as well. So I was always sort of learning something totally different. Um, so, soap acting is again totally different. You, you're acting to three cameras. So you, 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 then, you then adapt. Uh, know uh, where, uh, where the camera will be focusing now, where it will be cutting, uh, when, when, when they edit it, uh, how, how this, will, uh, uh, this will be seen uh, on the day. Is there any uh, favorite director or actor you have enjoyed working with really well? Um, yes, I enjoyed working with Robin Williams. Thank you. Yes, in a movie called Being Human. Uh, he was my master, I was his servant. I worked with him in Morocco. Uh, I, I was gobsmacked when I got the role. Uh, the well-known direct, director, Will Forsyth, David Putnam produced it. And I spent a month and a half of filming it on location uh, and became, became very good friends with him. He was, he was lovely, generous. Uh, I, never, I never felt that I was working with a world a famous uh, 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 actor, comedian, uh, stand-up comic, a genius. Uh, and, and, and I loved, loved working with him, often on, on screen. Um, yeah, he used to send me Christmas cards every year, uh, which was, my wife said, have you written back to Robin Williams? And I said, no, I can't. He must be sending it to so many people. Until I bumped into other English actors who were in the same film. And I realized that, no, they, they, they weren't getting Christmas cards. But he, he truly chose me or a few other people. Recently, I worked with... Oliver Stone in a movie called Snowden, which was funded by, 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 by Germany and France, but not by Hollywood because Snowden, Edward Snowden, was very critical of uh, CIA, FBI, the American administration. I saw him in London, uh, uh, knowing fully well that I was in Emmerdale. My agent plucked up the courage and put me up for the role. I met him. I was only supposed to see him for... Uh, 10 minutes. I ended up being in there for less than one hour. It was fantastic. Anyway, then they said, you've got the role. And then I realized that I have to go back to ITV and say, can I, can I be uh, in this? Uh, and I, 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 I admire my agent for putting me up for it because you're in a soap, you can't do anything else. You know, I am a property of ITV. My character, Rishi Sharma, it's owned by ITV. So I have to be very, very honorable to them. Don't bring, you know, I can't bring any disrepute to my character. I have that job. I, that, that's my responsibility. But anyway, um, I went to my, 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 my executive producer and they said, yeah, if you're free, you can, you, can, you can do it. Yeah, why not? Because, and then they changed the plans or whatever. So Oliver Stone's company came back and they said, oh, we've changed the dates. And I was like, now I can't do it. So we went back to uh, Oliver Stone. My agent went back and said, you can't have Baskar now because you've changed the date. And these things happen, you know. He rang ITV in Leeds and said, uh, uh, I, I said to them, I said, Oliver Stone will give you a call. And they said, no, 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 you're joking. And Oliver Stone rang them and he said, why can't I have Baskar? He said, why can't I have Baskar? And they said, well, we can't, Mr. Stone, because this is what we do. Everything is well planned. We have three units working. Uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a factory, but in a, in a good, in an artistic factory. He changed the dates. Uh, he said to them, he said, you tell me when Basker is not available, but I want him. And he, he said to the casting director, please do not see anybody else. I have made up my mind. I met the guy. I, I want him. And working with him was again another world. He would never let anyone change dialogues. This is again going back to, I'm glad I grew up in India. I'm glad that I grew up in, a, in, in my culture. Uh, uh, so when I was working with Oliver Stone, he would say, what do you think? And if something didn't, didn't work, I would say while rehearsing, I would say, Oliver, can I, can I do something? He'd go, Bashkar, you do it. 
and you do it. And, and for him, the book was like a, like a Bible for him. Every word, every comma, every full stop meant something. And hence, hence he's a well-known filmmaker, a, a, a script writer. And he would go, that was good. That was good. And he would, he would make the changes. The guy playing the lead role uh, of Snowden, he, must, he, he probably was thinking, who the hell is this Indian that Oliver Stone allows him to, to, to do this? But I think because it comes from the heart, uh, uh, the, the creator would go, actually, yeah, I, I, must, I must, must give him a chance. So on the day filming in, in Munich, um, um, he would let me, he said, come and watch this, uh, uh, the monitor. Take. I would say, no, 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 I, I'll leave it with you. So no, come and watch. I said, what do you think? And I would go, oh, I'd like to do something. He would say, okay, let's go again. So working with Oliver Stone and at ITV, they were like, my God, we have I Oliver Stone ringing from, from a well-known, world-renowned, world-famous director ringing ITV saying, I want Bashkar. Uh, so that gives you another kind of a... a, 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 a confidence. Yeah. Idea. Uh, but also, they, they, ITV would go, actually, we have an actor who, who, who's, who, who, uh, who's known elsewhere and, and he's needed elsewhere as well. So we're lucky to have him, I think. What is the biggest change in your life ever since you, you started doing the Rishi Sharma role? Uh, it gave you, being in a drama like that, uh, day in and day out, you, you, you're acting, you're practicing your craft gives you confidence so tomorrow if i have to go and meet another director for another role in something else instantly if they ask you to do something you instantly without knowing you give them exactly what they want nearer to what they want and 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 that's because of the kind of work i do in a continuing drama in a soap drama every day you're practicing something Every day you're in a different, same role, but the, the same role is, is, is put in a different, in, in different situations. And, and we have a family. I have a family in it. I have, a, I, have, I have two sons. I have a daughter. And the soaps are about families. Um, and, and so that actually gives you that confidence. Um, uh, uh, and, and yeah, and, and, and I'm, I want to be a, a slow burning candle, which I told the executive producers. I don't want to burn out quickly. There's no point. Did uh, they give you a choice or is it up to them or the script writers uh, how they write the story? Do they give you a choice? Now, in a soap, normally it's a writers-led medium and, and the executive producers. But the writers who are our regular writers, they know which way the whole uh, 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 carpet, the tapestry is being, being woven. So, you, you know, I could be a little, little uh, 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 person in, in, in there, but I do matter. Because without me, the whole uh, uh, tapestry isn't finished, basically. So I'd rather leave it to them. Because in a soap, uh, soap isn't about you. It, it, it isn't about Rishi Sharma, my character. I'm, I'm part of this big, big picture. What uh, best acting tip would you give to any budding Gujarati actor? I would say keep on doing everything. Small role, big role, do all, all, all manner of work. Never say, oh, I, I don't want to do a corporate video or I, I don't want to do a, a small part in, in, in this TV drama or, or, or a small role uh, uh, on, 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 in theatre. Uh, because I learned a lot. And you meet people. You meet uh, different people. And so, so you get accustomed to working in an environment where you will survive in future. Uh, uh, so, so absorb as much as you can. Meet uh, people, you never know that that person you helped one day long ago is now a, a big director or a big writer, and people never forget. They 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 always see your input in in their productions. Uh, so, would you advise young people to take up being an actor in the present time, or would you say, okay, the better goes for some business or something else because the money is more stable? Well, now, as an actor, uh, if you apply your energy uh, in a right way, uh, uh, you, you can make a living. You can make a living. So do go to uh, a drama school. Because I think 
having that training uh, is important. Um, so if you can, unless you get lucky and you get a lead role or, or a kind of a role in a, in a film or in theater, then learn on the hoof. But, but if I were you, I would go to a, a, a drama school and, 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 and get, get the training so that you know uh, what the directors are talking about. You know how you can survive. Because acting for me, it's all about uh, uh, the technique as well. I think now, the, 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 now that I'm, I'll be 65 tomorrow, I think acting is the last thing that's required. What, what, what gets you through is, is, is the technique, basically. Uh, uh, how, 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 to, how, how to do things, uh, uh, how to portray a character in theatre, on television, in films. What are your plans for um, doing when you kind of slow down uh, uh, opening, uh, opening a drama school or something like that? No, I'll, 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 I'll always be an actor. Uh, I, I, th I think I'll, I'll always be uh, an actor. I can't see myself... Uh, doing anything else, but slowly, I'm also also encouraging. I'm also encouraging a lot of young filmmakers to 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 do short films. So I always, as well as being in in Amaldel, uh, they let me do a lot of other short films uh, where, where I'm not bringing disrepute to ITV or to my character, and I'm learning a lot as well. As well as being in in Amaldel, I do a lot of other short films, and there again. I am not playing Rishi Sharma. I am playing another role. So I want to keep myself alive all the time so that when I go back uh, uh, playing Rishi Sharma, I'm, 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 I'm still alive and, and, and fresh as well. And also I know that if tomorrow, if that role goes, um, I've still made contacts uh, with the outside world. I know what the young directors or young writers are thinking because every generation is different. Nowadays, people can pick up a phone, iPhone, and they can do a short film on, 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 on their iPhone because the, the technology is great. And people have actually a short movies on, on, on mobile phones. So that you have to learn as well, uh, as an actor as well, how to take directions from young, young kids uh, who are barely 20, 25 or 18, but they have an idea, you know, they, they, they want to be uh, tomorrow's filmmakers, you know, they're tomorrow's Steven Spielberg or Oliver Stone or, 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 or big, big directors or writers. Yeah. Do you have a mission for acting or performing films, plays, and do you think it's important in present life? I, now, I, I, I love theatre. But now I, I do want to uh, work in America as well. But at the same time, I don't want to give up my role in Rishi Sharma. So the reason I, I want to do that, it's because I've worked with American directors now. Uh, here's a difference. In Britain, an English director would see the character and it says, this person is, is 80 uh, and he's this and he's that. And they'll stick by that. With an American director, American producer, you go and see them. Although it says this character is 80, but they meet you, they like your reading, and you go and see them again and you tell them, why do you want to cast me? And they'll say, forget about what it says on that piece of paper that this character has to be this. We don't care. We like you because you're a good actor. And it happened to me uh, a couple of times. American producers have said, I, I went to see them again, and they said, um, welcome back, and you know, we, we loved you, uh, your um, reading the other day. We called you back, and shall we do those scenes again? Any question? And I have said, and I did say to them, I said, that character, it's like a drive, you know, a Morgan Freeman in Driving Miss Daisy, because it did say that this Indian character, it's like Morgan Freeman in Driving Miss Daisy. And he did say that uh, he's um, in his sort of late 80s or whatever. And this is way back. I said, I'm not 80. I'm, I'm barely 50 plus or whatever. They said, no, forget that. We like what you did. And you got the role. And you work with those people. I haven't seen that uh, in, in British directors. They just stick to that. What's on, on that piece of paper? Have you had any experience of Bollywood? Yes, I did. I have done Bollywood films, uh, not not in uh, in India, but over here when 
they 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 do film a lot of uh, uh, Bollywood films. Uh, you know, I think for me, I prefer Hindi films, but Bollywood films are for me they're like a mishmash of everything. Um, the old old uh, Hindi films uh, had uh, gravitas. Uh, uh, they they tackle social issues and 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 the the acting was uh, more kind of from the heart, whereas. I think today's Bollywood films, they're just like song and dance. And, and, and for me, that's not me. Uh, yes, those films that I did act in, I never felt that uh, uh, I was working with artists. Uh, um, they would do their bit and you do your bit and then you go away. So you felt like uh, um, um, it, it was an insult. Whereas in Britain, you work with actors. Or you work with American actors, British actors. You're a family. You, you're working with each other. You talk to, hi, hello, how are you? Uh, whereas with, I found that with, with Bollywood crew, uh, the crew f uh, were fantastic. The, uh, uh, the director would be great. But, but working with uh, Bollywood actors, if we call them actors, um, they would be in their own world. And for me, theatre is about communicating, relating to each other, saying, hi, how are you, whatever. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, he or she is a, a multi-million dollar earning actor and you are just a, a, um, a one day player or whatever. Uh, but we're actors, you know, say hello. You're from there. Do you not want to say hello to me or whatever? We're in the same scene. I was working with an actor where I was playing a kind of a, a Ramanujan kind of a part, you know, the mathematician, and he was he was my disciple, their disciple, and the whole uh, the situation was set in Cambridge. I would invite him from India. This is in a story it's a story term, and it was bas basically a retake of Back to Future. So anyway, they rehashed it, and you know, it was like Back to Future. And I'm this actor that I'm acting with. I have lots of scenes with him, you know, over ten days or whatever. And you're in your trailer doing your makeup, and he would never even say hello to you. <laughs> For me, uh, it's 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 not acting. It's not it's not a creating a drama art, you know. Uh, so I really I, I did work with Rishi Kapoor. Lo I loved working with him, and we communicated. Yeah, but then he comes from a a theatrical family where he knows. He did say to me, he said, "Why don't you come to uh, India?" And I said, there's no point because I don't want to start all over again. Uh, I'm very happy here uh, because the roles are small roles, but I am uh, uh, doing it with dignity. I'm, I'm given respect. Although the roles are very tiny, small, but, but I'm doing it with pride. Uh, whereas Bollywood, uh, it's, it's, a, uh, yeah, it's another entity. Uh, and I don't want to be in a world like that. Um, yeah. As a Gujarati, how do you feel you have um, uh, uh, changed uh, your people around you or you know you, you left your ancestral home and now all of a sudden 65 years uh, in this country obviously it's a massive change for you isn't it or for your ancestors as well. How do you see yourself um, in all these years? Uh, yes, um, uh, England has become my home. But then again, I want to go to America and, and again, uh, do something there again, challenging. Uh, because in America, they make a lot of films, a lot of roles. And in America, it doesn't matter whether you're Indian or not. They, you, you, you see, they see you for a role. And if you write for the role, they would cast you in that role. Going back to Bollywood, that's not my cup of tea, unless Bollywood changes. And it won't change for a long, long time. Also, the acting that Bollywood requires, it's song and dance and being looking handsome and pretty. And that's not me. They're, they're, um, I've, I've learned a lot from here as well. I want to do something good as well. I want to do a lot of films if I can. Uh, but at the moment, I'm very happy being playing Rishi Sharma. They're very ITV. They're very good to me. I'm learning every day, which I don't think I would, I would, I can do that back in Mumbai, uh, in, in a Bollywood movie. It's, it's, uh, and I, I'm not part of the sort of nepotism world. Uh, uh, I, I come from nowhere. I am a kind of a self-made actor. I've made mistakes. Nobody taught me. 
I learned everything by myself. I fell down. I, 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 I picked myself up. And I, I wouldn't change it. I would not change it. Um, here, I, I'm, I'm comfortable here, but at the same time, you still feel that you're an outsider. I, I really don't know why. You still feel an outsider. I'm sure if one day, if I can go to America, if I do, if I do go to America, I will be an outsider. But as long as you're happy in your work, um, then, then, then that, that is fine for me. For me, that's fine. Any message for any, anything you want to say, maybe for young people or any outlook? Not so personal, not from what you want to do, but maybe something for other people. I think for me, um, my message to uh, British Gujarati children is this, that if you do want to uh, enter into, into media, Uh, into the art world, uh, uh, please don't think that um, you're on your own. There are people like you who, again, will not have a backing from your family, but you're not on your own. I think here now there is a lot uh, you can gain from. Uh, go into it wholeheartedly. Uh, go into it. You In the beginning, it might be very scary financially as well, and also... Uh, uh, mentally as well, a lot of rejections, but don't don't see those rejections as a kind of a, um, of a failure. Uh, I never saw them as 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 my my sort of failure. I learned a lot. So if you do want to go into it, please do because there are a lot of avenues available. But you will come across a lot of barriers as well. Overcome them, and as long as you have family support, and as long as your family know what you're doing. Um, I, I think you will you will succeed. Yeah.